welcome to my summer fruits in watercolor series. If you're new here, my name is Emily Winslow and I love to spread the joy of watercolor to others. In this series, I'll be posting a new video each Tuesday and Friday in the month of July and I'll be walking you through how to paint a different summer fruit with watercolor. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through what I think is one of summer's most refreshing fruits, which is watermelon. I think this is a great one to start with. It's super simple to paint and I think anyone can do this. Let's go ahead and grab our paintbrushes and get started. Let's begin with what materials we are going to be using in this painting. We're going to be using this Prang Oval 16 watercolor set. You can find it on Amazon. It's very reasonably priced and I think it's a great starter kit. I usually use two different kind of brushes, a size 12 and a size 8. And then we're going to use our pencil for sketching out the watermelon. And then of course our paper and our water. You can find all the materials I use in my Amazon storefront, which I have linked in my description. Let's go ahead and sketch out the watermelon. So I'm going to start with this big one back here and we're just going to make an oval shape and I like to have the painting take up most of the space on the paper. So I am painting on a size 5x5 five five paper but you can use whatever size you'd like for your own painting. And once we have our oval we don't need to connect the entire thing because we're going to have our smaller watermelon pieces in front of it. So let's go ahead and sketch this middle piece here. We're just going to make a straight line a little bit more to the left here. And we're going to make a diagonal line a little bit outside of this oval. Let's go ahead and connect that to the bottom. And once we have that middle piece, I'm actually going to sketch out where we see the um, white part because we want to make sure we leave some of this lighter color and then also the outside green. So we're going to just take a line a little bit inside of where we've already sketched and then do a second one. If you feel comfortable, you can just go ahead and start the painting. I always like to sketch out, um, especially if I'm doing a little bit more detailed paintings, it helps me to sketch first. So now that we have these two pieces, let's go ahead and sketch this last one. It's more of a pyramid shape, so let's go ahead and take this line down the middle. So we're going to have the point right about here and take that straight down past where even the bottom of this big watermelon is. And then we're going to do each of the sides here. And then one last one on the right side. And then go ahead and connect those. We want this middle line to be the furthest down. And take your time with a sketch. If you need to pause the video um, or you know put it in slower version, you can do that. And once we finish this bottom piece, I'm actually going to do one more thing. Um, for this big watermelon piece, I want to kind of sketch out where we're going to be placing our lines. We want to make sure that we leave some of these white to have the highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle right here. And I'm going to sketch a line right towards the top to show where we're going to put those darker green stripes. This will help us when we start our painting. I think the sketch looks great, so let's go ahead and start painting. So I'm gonna take my bigger brush here. I'm gonna start mixing up some colors and I'm gonna show you how to mix these colors that we have in the Prang 16 set to achieve these um, more muted colors. I like to use muted colors a lot in my paintings. So we're gonna start with the larger watermelon. So let's go ahead and grab some white and a bit of this green. 
make a really light color. And I'm also gonna take some yellow. So again, that's white, green, and yellow. And that's gonna be our very base color and we're gonna layer on after that. So once you have mixed your color, go ahead and put that all over the watermelon. You can use more water to kind of lighten that color up even more. And we're gonna avoid the other um, pieces of watermelon. So I'm just going around those pieces here. And that is our base layer. So let's go ahead and mix up some darker green colors to start adding those in. And I really like to work when the paint is still wet. So I'm taking kind of a lot of colors here to make a darker green shade. I want to use green, orange, and brown. Make this warmer green color. And I'm just going to tap that in where we wanted to add our stripes here. I'm just going to roughly go where those areas are. We don't have to be perfect here. Watercolor in general is just not a perfect medium. It runs everywhere and um, definitely hard to control when the water is wet. So don't worry if it bleeds. I always like the look of watercolor when it's bleeding more. And it makes it looser and not too straight of lines. So now that we have our darker color in here, I'm going to actually take my smaller brush here and make sure that these points towards the middle are more pointed. And I'm actually now going to take an even darker color and go with that green and now black. That's a little too dark. Once you add black in your brush, it's almost a little hard to get out. So kind of need to use that water a bit. That's better. And I also like to add a little bit of blues in my shadow. So I'm also going to add blue in here. So now that I have a darker color, let's go ahead and Go over those same lines, tapping that in here. And this will just add more depth to our watermelon. So we're just follow we're just following our lines where we added, making sure it comes to a point at this middle. Going towards the bottom here. If you find that your paint is running a little bit too much, you can always take some water and lift up a little bit if you need. So I wanted to make sure that the it didn't run too much where the line you can't really see the lines anymore. So I wanted to lift that up a little bit. Let me know what your favorite summer fruit is. I think watermelon would be in my top three. I think mango is my favorite. Watermelon, you have to get it. It has to be like a certain color for me to like it. When I get watermelons that aren't sweet enough, I usually just blend them up into a watermelon drink. And literally you can just put it in a blender and will make this nice refreshing drink. So just keep manipulating these lines however long you need to. Um, I'm just gonna add a few more dark spots around here and then I'm gonna move on. But again, if you need to pause the video for a moment, go ahead and do that. And do not worry if you just need to start this painting over. I uh, practiced this one a few times until I got it right. So you can see here's one of my practice rounds and it helps for me to 
have that in front of me to reference. So hopefully that helps you a bit too. So let's go ahead and move on to this middle one here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the red area. So we're gonna take the white and red. That seems like a good base color. We want it again to start really light because with watercolor, I have mentioned this in almost all of my videos, it is easier to layer on over a light color rather than take away from a dark color. So I always start light and then I add as I need to from there. If you need a takeaway color, you can always take a um, paper towel and dab at an area by wetting the area and then taking the paper towel to it. That usually gets it off a little bit. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit more red in here. I wanna keep it towards the edges. So I want to leave that middle area pretty light. Just gonna tap that in right by the base and even a little bit towards the top. You can just take more water to help blend the area. That's the thing I love about watercolor. Um, I think it's just easy to blend compared to some other paint mediums. I have a little bit harder time blending other paint because they get dry so quickly. Well, oil doesn't, but I think oil painting is really hard. I need to practice with that a little bit more. <laughs> but watercolor is just been my favorite medium. All right, so I think that looks good for that middle watermelon. Actually, I'm going to blend this area a bit more. And then I'm going to go to the bottom watermelon here. I wanted to give that a chance to dry a little bit more um, before we start tackling the green. What's it called? Is it a shell? I don't know what the outer part of the watermelon is called. So let me know in the comments because I can't think of it right now. Watermelon shell. That doesn't sound right to me, but I'm not really sure what it, else it would be called. Um, let's go ahead and take that light base color all around. And then we are going to take a darker red here. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of black in here. This darker red I'm going to add on, go back to this middle one and add in more dark colors because I think it could use a little bit more. Feel free to revisit any other areas you think you might have missed something or sometimes the watercolor dries and then I realize I need to add a little bit more so that's also okay if you let it dry and then realize you need to go back and add something. Now let's go back to this one down here and I'm going to go ahead and make the right side of this pyramid a little bit darker than the other. Go ahead and just add that color in and still add some more over on this side but I'm going to keep it to the left. So I want this highlight in the middle to be more prominent. Then I'm going to take more dark and make this tip even darker up here. And make that down the middle like to make the shadows more dramatic sometimes. I'm going to take a little bit of blue actually. Go here at the bottom with that. Adding blue and shadows to me just kind of takes some paintings to the next level. I like kind of adds a little bit more variation in color. Let's go ahead and move on to our, uh, I'm just going to call it shell in this video. Um, I'm going to paint the middle part kind of an off white. So it's going to, we're going to take our white and I want it to be uh, maybe a little yellowish. So I'm going to take yellow and white here. We want a really light color, but we don't want it to be stark white. So I'm just going to paint that in 
making sure to avoid the red that we just painted because I don't really want that to bleed down. So if you need to wait on this part till it dries a bit more, you can feel free to do that. I just get impatient with paintings and I don't really like to wait for things to dry, which probably should do that sometimes. Um, okay, let's go ahead and grab our green. And I want a little bit of brown. Whenever I want a warmer green, I usually take the green and like an orange or brown to make it warmer. If I want cooler green, I'll take the blue and add it to the green. Let's go ahead and paint this outside. I'm gonna stay where we sketched here. Sometimes sketches are important to take some time to do that. I've definitely rushed through sketches and then kind of regretted it when I started painting and couldn't see where I needed to paint. <laughs> so feel free to just take your time. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here on the bottom. Gonna take that very bottom. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and I'm just gonna take a little bit of a darker green mixed with black to add that at the very bottom, kind of to add more to the shadow. And after we have this but we just need to add our seeds and our shadow and we are all done with this so super excited for the next video i'm going to be teaching you how to paint a lemon next so i think that lemon also reminds me of being refreshing so i wouldn't eat a lemon by itself but love lemonade let's go ahead and just take a black and add in our little dots here so i'm just gonna Make the, oh, see what I mean? I kind of need to wait a little bit because it's going to bleed. So wait till that is dry and then do the dots. So let me actually do the shadow first and then we'll do the dots. I'm just going to take white. I want the shadow to be pretty light. So I'm going to do white and then a tad bit of blue. So it's this very light bluish gray. And we're just gonna go at the bottom of this watermelon here and kind of make it look like it's, you know, sitting on a table a bit. And the shadow is totally optional. If you just want to leave your painting as it is, you are totally welcome to do that. So I'm just adding that in here and then I'm gonna take um, some purple and blue here mixed with black, a darker shadow, and we're gonna keep that close to the watermelon. I love to use purple and shadows as well. I think it just adds a nice cool tone. So we're gonna spread that out a little bit more by just taking water and helping it blend. We want the shadow to be very well blended. I don't want a ton of sharp lines here. Now let's see if this is dry. I'm just gonna touch it feels pretty dry so let's attempt this again taking your black or brown just any really dark a dark color would be fine you want to keep these really small you don't want your seeds to be too big because they aren't big in real life just carefully dot those in 
And you can put as many as you like. I just like to keep them kind of around the center. And then we're gonna do the same thing for our bottom piece. Just gonna maybe put a few on this side and maybe two here. And that is our watermelon painting. We are all done with this one. Come back for my next video to learn how to paint a lemon. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about how to paint a watermelon with watercolor. In our next video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a lemon with watercolor. So I hope you join me for that and have fun with this series. I think this is a great summer challenge to increase your skill in watercolor. As always, you can find me on social media at Watercolor with Emily or my website, watercolorwithemily.com. And I'd love if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Until we paint again next time.